1 Corinthians 3, I just want to read this passage here. But, you know, when I think of the ground of truth, um, the way I think of it is, you know, it's like a garden. You know, I mean, the, 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 the ground is meant to be like the soil uh, and the atmosphere in which people can grow. And if you think about a garden, you know, you can do as much as you can to, to try and make these seedlings grow, but at the end of the day, it's God that makes that seed grow, isn't it? You can't force a seed to grow, but what you can do is you can provide an environment, you can provide an atmosphere that is most conducive for that seed to grow. So, you know, you'll tend to the garden, you'll water it, you know, you'll make sure that the temperature is right. If you need to put it in a greenhouse, you do. So that's where I think of the church being the ground of truth, is it's like the soil that we're all planted in, and if we have, you know, like what we talk about, the godly atmosphere, we, we exalt the truth, we're a family, we'll provide a soil and a garden in which people can flourish and then they can grow. Uh, so let's read here in 1 Corinthians 3, um, verse 6. It says, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So people sometimes will take this verse too far and say, God just does everything. No, because God doesn't do everything. It's because just like a garden, right? We think about a garden. You know, yes, God ultimately makes that seed grow, but we have a responsibility to tend to that garden, to make sure that that garden has the right environment and all, all the things I just talked about. So we do play a part, but ultimately God does give the increase. But, you know, he says here that he has to plant and Apollos has to water. God gives the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. So ultimately, like Jesus says, I think in John 15, without me, you can do nothing. So without God, none of the planting and watering makes any difference. But we still have a responsibility to do that. Um, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. So there's that working together. We are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall lo suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So this is talking about the judgment seat of Christ. And, you know, there's different ways you can build upon the foundation of Jesus Christ, which is your sa salvation. Um, you can say gold, silver, precious stones, verse 12, wood, hay, and stubble. So if you're wondering what can be gold, silver, and precious stones, and what can be wood, hay, and stubble, well, you think about what has eternal value and what doesn't. If it's not something that has eternal value that's going to give you something uh, in the next life, then that's wood, hay, and stubble. And every person is responsible how he's going to build his foundation. Now we see here also that in uh, verse 15, it says, If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. A loss of what? A loss of reward. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So this is uh, supporting the fact that salvation is not by works because your foundation is Jesus Christ. You get that foundation by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. But you can build on that foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, and stubble. And even though you've built a house fully of wood, hay, and stubble, even if that all goes, you'll suffer loss. But the Bible says here, you'll suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved yet so as by fire, showing that salvation is indeed by grace um, and not by works. So a couple of things I just want to mention here is, you know, it says here that God gives the increase. So the, the idea of church is not to force you to do good works. Yes, we do provoke unto love and good works, and we'll go to that verse in a second. But we, we cannot force good works. I mean, even if you force good works, it's not going to be good works. Because if the person is doing the good works because you force them to do it, they're not even doing it for the right reason. You know, because we have to do things in faith. And if people are just doing things to, to serve man, 
then that is not good works because you're serving man, you're in sin. So, you know, we want to provide an environment in church, where, not where we force people to grow and force people to do good works because that's not the sort of growth we want. We want people to do it for the right reasons. We want people to do good works because they love God. And when we think about that, if that's what church is meant to be, that's how we want to provoke unto love and good works. You know, we don't provoke unto love and good works by guilting people, making people feel bad, but we might provoke unto love and good works by saying, hey, you know, if you love God, don't you love God enough to want to go soul winning? You know, don't you love people enough to want to go tell them about Jesus? You know, don't you want to grow as a Christian? Because if you do not get involved in the work, you don't witness, you're not going to grow. Jesus said, uh, you know, that the branch that uh, tries to bear fruit, he's going to purge it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So as a Christian, you know, if you are honestly, seriously wanting to grow as a Christian, you're going to want to do good works. So if you love God and you, and you want to grow, do good works, but don't do good works because you're worried about what man thinks or you're worried about what, um, you know, that, that, that you're being guilted into it by another person. Now, the only reason why you should think, care about what other people think is because you want to be an example, right? You want to be an example to other people. So there, you know, there's, there's a balance here of the right way to do things and the wrong way to do things. But if we have the right purpose of what the church should, how the church should do it, how it should be a ground, that will um, change how we think about how we are to encourage one another in the Lord and how we are to talk to one, people, one another because we don't want to hinder the, that growth, you know, and, and we want people to, to be able to grow freely in the Lord uh, and just, you know, be in good ground like we're talking about. So, you know, we don't need to force good works and in fact, uh, you know, we can't because we'll only create believers that are serving man. So we don't want people to be serving man, serving out of fear. We want people to be serving out of love and, and first and foremost, love for God. <clears throat> but we also see here, it says, but let, he, let every man, verse 10, let every, it says, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, Paul is saying, I have laid the foundation. So what does he mean here? He's preached unto them the gospel. He's got them saved. So that foundation is Jesus Christ. And he says, another buildeth thereon, so other people are helping you to build this house, right? But look at what it says in verse 10. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Right? So there's this idea here that even though, you know, the, the church is this ground of truth that you're going to be planted in that's going to help you to grow, ultimately you are responsible for your own spiritual growth. You are responsible for where you are right now in the Lord and how spiritually mature you are. You can't, you can't say, well, you know, nobody helped me or nobody, you know, nobody taught me this or my church wasn't helping me to grow. You can't really blame it on anyone else. You are responsible for your own spiritual growth. So you need to take it upon yourself to get in the Word. You know, like you can't say, well, you know, church only meets one time a week. That's not enough for me to grow in the Lord. But you've got to be reading the Bible every day. I mean, you're just coming here for a meal that I've prepared, but you've got to feed yourself every day. And to be honest, that's the only way you're going to grow. If you think church is, you know, the, 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 the only thing that's going to make you grow, you've got it wrong. It's, just, it's here to support your growth. It's here to support you uh, in raising your family. But you ultimately are going to be responsible to make sure you implement uh, the commandments of God to make sure you and your family are growing. Uh, so you've got a responsibility there. Uh, I'm going to show you this verse in Psalm 92. I thought it was... I came across it and I thought it fit really well with this thought of church being a ground of truth and like this soil in a garden. It says here in Psalm 92, 12, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Now we just have to be careful like every time we read um, you know, passages in the Old Testament. We need to interpret them in light of the New Testament and the New Covenant. So it talks about, you know, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. And we might think, oh man, I still sin. I'm not righteous, right? So we can't misapply that and just say those that are perfectly righteous will flourish because we are righteous by faith. So in the Old Testament, you know, it talks about the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree, but we know our righteousness is of God by faith. So those that believe are the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree, he shall grow like the cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. And see the house of the Lord in the New Testament is, um, 
is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Um, so we can see there that if we are planted, you know, because obviously we're not perfect too, so the house of the Lord is not a, a perfect house because we're all made of, it's made of sinners. But we see that principle there that if we have a church that is striving to try and do the right thing, trying to provide that environment, and the righteous believer by faith is planted in that house, that will help them to flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. A, a cedar is a, a very large tree. So that's how the church, that's how I see the church work. That's why, you know, it's called the ground of truth. And, you know, your heart works the same way. You know, we, we, we think about the parable of the sower. You know, we had the, the, the seed that fell by the wayside. We had the stony ground, the thorny ground, but then the good ground. So just like the, the believer being planted in this good ground will bring forth fruit in his old age, it's the same as your heart. You know, if you let the seed of God, the word of truth, be planted and your heart is good ground, you will also bring forth fruit as a believer. So it's a, it's a, it's a consistent analogy in the word of God of this, I guess, uh, this, uh, this husbandry, this, this farm, right? Or this, this garden that is being tended to and the house of God is like this garden, this ground of truth where believers can flourish and grow in the Lord.